Hey guys, it's Gawain, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of the characters in Apex with a slightly simpler kit, Loba. Loba is a support legend that specialises in her own escapability and finding high tier loot for herself and her teammates. Loba can be very selfish, but also a great addition to a slightly more passive team that plays from range and for placements. So let's learn how to play her. Loba is equipped with her Burglar Bracelet, of which she gets one on a 30 second cooldown. This bracelet is a throwable teleportation device that transports Loba to itself when it lands on a surface that you can stand on, such as the floor or a rooftop. This ring can be thrown up to 71 meters when you are on flat ground, and even further, surpassing 100 meters when on higher ground. You can throw this ring through small gaps, such as in between the bars on windows you can't climb through but can shoot through. When the ring is flying through the air, you can't cancel it, but you can press the button you use to shoot your gun on whatever platform you play on to force the ring to hit the ground and teleport you to it almost immediately. If you accidentally throw the ring off the edge of the map or into an out of bounds surface, then it will return to you without activating the cooldown. After you teleport to the ring, there is a short animation where Loba puts it back on, meaning if you teleport into a group of enemies, you're as good as dead. This is an escape and repositioning tool, not an engagement tool. I personally use it in one of two ways. The first way is escaping enemies when I'm in either a bad position or very low on health. It's pretty simple, but very effective, as it puts distance between you and the enemy, meaning if you teleport to behind cover and you have teammates distracting the enemy, then you have time to heal. Just know that enemies are able to see your ring when you throw it, so they will be able to follow you very easily, and they most likely will if you are incredibly low on health and they know it. The second way I use the ring is to reposition myself onto higher ground or crossing somewhere without getting shot at. There is some vertical mobility to take advantage of with this ability, but not tons. It's enough to get you somewhere just out of climbing distance, but not much further than that. I use this to position myself on top of a roof or other piece of high ground quickly when engaging an enemy squad so I can rain down on the enemy from above. The ring also has a few interesting interactions. You can hit it off of a jump pad to extend its distance if you are far enough away from the pad when you throw the ring so you don't teleport to it immediately. It can hit a crypto drone and you will teleport to it, so do with that what you will. Your bracelet will bounce off a Gibraltar dome and land on the ground beside it. Finally, if you throw your bracelet and take a wraith portal, you will be pulled out of the portal's tunnel and teleported to the ring's location when it lands. That's it for this ability, it's pretty simple, just throw it and wait for it to land so you can teleport to it. Just account for the ring's travel time and the animation afterwards before throwing it to double check it's a good idea to throw it when and where you want. Loba's passive is called an Eye for Quality, and this ability allows Loba to see epic, legendary, and even mythic tier items through walls within a 112.5 meter radius of Loba. You can ping these items through walls for your teammates when the item is 12 meters away from you maximum, unless you have a higher zoom optic, then the range is increased slightly. Death boxes, loot ticks, and loot balls cannot be seen through walls, regardless of if they have a high tier item inside them or not. That's all there is to this passive in terms of how it works, as it's a very simple one. Use this to find the attachments that you or your teammates need by asking them what guns they are using and pinging any purple or gold attachments you see for their guns. You can also see what weapons are in a care package, so if you and your team are surrounded by enemies, but you still want to go for a care package, you can double check it's worth it before going in. You can be a complete loot goblin with this passive, but make sure to leave some good stuff for your teammates so that they have a fair fighting chance too, as this is a team game remember. Ping some stuff for your team and gear up when you see something good behind a wall or in a loot bin. Loba's ultimate is called Black Market Boutique, and it's a placeable stick that expands into some futuristic teleportation device thingy. This is a device that allows you, your teammates, and even enemies to teleport loot directly to their inventory. Anything within a 112.5 meter radius will be available in the black market. It's a cylindrical radius it pulls from, so it doesn't matter how high up or low down the loot is from the stick, the loot will still be available, even on the 
outer edges. Each player can grab two items, and as much ammo as they want, as long as there's enough in the radius of course. Any item stacks such as ammo, meds or others affected by legend passives such as fuses grenades will be pulled in a full stack and the excess will be thrown at your feet, if you have a full inventory. When placing this ultimate, use your minimap to show you where you will be pulling loot from and try to cover as many buildings as possible with it while still remaining in cover. You don't want enemies beaming you whilst you loot. That being said, when you place your shop, a blue burst of light will be emitted from it when it's finished the 4.5 second deploy time animation, alerting enemies that you have just opened a shop. They will also be able to see blue trails of light from when you are taking items as they get transported to you. So, when is it a good idea to use this thing? When your teammates need a certain bit of loot that you can't really see through a wall, or they want a specific gun, then you can place your market and cause them to go straight to it like it's a dog that's heard its owner's whistle. You can also use this to take one item from a locked area, such as a vault on World's Edge and other map equivalents. This will cause the Black Market Boutique to be destroyed immediately, damage Loba a bit, and set off an alarm that will most likely attract enemies. If you are going to steal an item from a vault, then do it last so that your teammates can get any items they want that aren't from the vault. You can tell an item is in a vault by a lock icon displayed on it. To continue good uses of this ultimate, it's brilliant endgame. You can drop your evo shield by it and grab any spares within the area so that you have quick shield swaps if you get hit by a Kraber shot or get dove by enemies. You can also constantly pull ammo from it like this so you can keep poking the enemy, wasting their resources a lot faster than your own. Generally, place it down when enemies already know your location so it's there when you need to pull a shield swap or meds quickly from it. But don't spend too much time in it as you will just die to an enemy that has rushed you and your team. Also, if you don't need Need anything but your teammates do, then grab some extra items for them, especially if they have just been spawned back in. As a closing note for this segment, I also want to mention that you can close your market down with H on keyboard and down on the D-pad on controllers, so make sure to do that when leaving an area so that enemies can't take advantage of it and loot up from your ability. That being said, if you come across an enemy Loba's black market, make sure to take full advantage of it and grab some extra loot. Loba is in the support class, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to play in the back and watch out for your team, because Loba doesn't have an ability to help the team during a fight really. You can play an aggressive Loba, utilising your tactical to get out of dodge if things get too hot, or you can play her more passively like I prefer to. I like to sit in the back, laying down suppressive fire for my teammates until we make a big push onto the enemy squad together, then I'll get up in the enemy's face. I use my tactical to get up into some form of high ground or even to catch up with my team if I absolutely have to. I take this playstyle because Loba doesn't have an instant escape ability or anything to enable her into an aggressive playstyle as it takes too long to get your gun back up after teleporting to go into an enemy with the bracelet. It's up to you how you play Loba, just remember to account for the travel time of your bracelet if you need a quick escape. Loba is very flirty with most characters, and other than that she's kind of domineering. She does have a few interactions where she's aggressive to other characters such as Revenant, but you shouldn't get put off by this. She doesn't have any annoying voice lines or an annoying voice in my opinion. Just try not to get distracted by her. She's just a bunch of code and pixels you horny perverts. Due to me preferring to play further back in the squad, but pushing up altogether, I like something long range like a sniper rifle or marksman rifle, paired with a short ranged fully automatic weapon such as an SMG or assault rifle. My ideal loadout for Loba is the Vault SMG paired with the Longbow DMR. The Vault is good at close to medium ranges with decent damage, fire rate and mag size. As for the Longbow, you can do loads of damage long range with it, getting easy downs if you catch the enemy in the open and have the aim for it. Furthermore, the high zoom optics it gets access to pair very well with Loba's passive as you can ping further away high tier items through walls. You can use any weapons on Loba, I just prefer something to poke long range with to help my teammates push up on the enemy by pressuring the enemy into healing or retreating into cover alongside a reliable SMG for when we get pushed or we push into close ranged combat. 
Loba has three counters, Revenant, Seer, and Bullets and Explosives. Revenant is the same as everyone else. If you get hit by one of his orbs, you can't use your abilities. To counter this, you either need to kill him before he fires his orbs, or just don't get hit forehead. As for Seer, he can stop your bracelet mid-cast. This means if you get hit by his tactical and your bracelet is mid-air, it will get cancelled and returned to you. To counteract this, keep moving around as you throw your bracelet to hopefully not get hit by the seer tactical. Finally, your ultimate has a health pool of 100 HP, so bullets, explosives, and anything else that does damage can destroy your black market. This is just another reason to place it in cover, rather than having it out in the open. Use your burglar's bracelet to get to safety when you and your teammates are low on HP so at least one of you can get out and try to heal and clutch up. When landing in a zone with enemies at the start of the game, use your passive to see if there are any purple or gold evo shields around to give your health boost right from the get go. Use your black market to supply your team with shield swaps and ammunition during the end game zones to give you the best chance of winning. Make your tactical hit the ground sooner if you hear the enemy closing in on you when you are low on HP to make sure you get some form of distance between you and them. Consider being your team's IGL in-game leader if you are playing further back as you will have a better perspective on the fight that is happening and you won't hinder your gameplay within the fight as much as you would be on the front line. Overall, Loba is a pretty easy legend to play in my opinion, as her tactical is easy to use, her passive is just wall hacks on good loot, and her ultimate is more free loot. Learn the travel time and arc of her tactical, learn when and where to place your ultimate, learn the best playstyle for you, and you are sure to become a pretty decent Loba player. Thank you all for watching, I do hope you enjoyed. If you found this guide helpful in any way, shape or form, please do consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends as it does help grow the channel. As always, every clip you saw in this video was taken from my Twitch stream, link will be on screen and in the description. This is the last video of 2022, so I do hope you all have a wonderful new year. Octane is next for the Apex series, check out my best of 22 video, hopefully coming on January the 1st if I get it done on time, and and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.